Thanks for staying with us. The road to the ANC's elective conference is getting interesting. Presidential hopeful Dr. Zulim Kiza received the nod from the ANC Youth League task team for party president. Uh, the league's task team also backed Paul Mashadile as a deputy. But what do these signal um, also, of course, as the league's for, for the for the league's future, in fact, when it goes into its own conference? At the same time, this afternoon, we saw the Women's League backing President and Cyril Ramaphosa for a second term. Interestingly, they are picking Tandi Mudise for deputy. But let's talk about this more with Riboni Dao, who's a former ANC Youth League National Task Team member who joins us live now. Ribon, thank you so much for your time. I mean, we look at what happened in the past uh, with the league and the current position that they are holding right now. Are you surprised by this result? Well, um, one is not surprised. I mean, if we look at how, when the composition uh, of this task team came about, um, it was clear that uh, the Cyril Ramaphosa faction did not have a lot of people in the task team. And that's why I have been hearing, you know, when I speak to some, you know, from that faction, that there are discussions actually to disband uh, the current uh, youth league after this conference, you know, so because of the EC that uh, Nonseba does not uh, have uh, support, you know, uh, uh, within the task team, you know, in terms of the divisions that are there in the task teams. Now that you've taken us behind some of the conversation you're having, I can't help but stay with that because the, we, we're seeing reports suggesting that, um, you know, those that are backing the current president, uh, you know, they, they tried to put up a, a very strong argument for the league to then, you know, the task team to back him and all of that. But ultimately, it didn't look like uh, they were winning. So what are some of the reasons then that you're hearing for their voices to be so drowned out? as you're hearing um in terms of because uh, for me when i spoke to actually the youth leaders you know, this morning mm. uh, who were sitting who were sitting in that meeting because i was actually asking them about the processes of the youth league not more about the individual mm. uh, leadership because historically uh, the youth league uh, was supposed to for an example hold rgcs you know that's how it has always been done and then after RGCs, probably PGCs, and then the national uh, uh, NEC would then call an extended uh, uh, national executive committee where regions would be part of that meeting, and then they will be consolidating. But this time around, that, that did not happen. And we're seeing also with the Women's League that they did not also go that route. Because the Youth League, you must remember that, and the Women's League are provinces going to this conference of the ANC. So who are their branches? Their branches are regions. You know, so their branches did not sit. So they just said, as the leadership of, you could say, a province and pronounced mm. without uh, having amended from the structures. And we've seen also with the women's league later this afternoon. That shows that the ANC is shifting away from its uh, uh, norms that is known of which are democratic. Because I don't think that both the women's league and the youth league in this process is the, the way democratic because members of the women's league and the ANC did not express themselves. Mm. And, and and I was going to ask you about that. I mean, the state of these structures as they're going to, to you know, to conference, what does it then tell us about their positions? Um, you know, as they're getting closer to December, would you say they're on a strong footing or they appear to be weakened somehow? I mean, both structures, I mean, uh, having an interim structure, uh, it, 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 it said that the organization is going through a process, you know, and it's said for the youth league because the youth league, I can tell you that next year marks 10 years, you know, since the disbandment of the youth league, which took place in 2013. And the youth league has not come back to its glory days. And the women's league, I could say that uh, uh, with this task team, they have actually been weakened. And why I say that, you look at the composition of, 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 of what they have just pronounced now. In 2017, women's league uh, ad, uh, advanced the issue of women, you know, and this time around they're saying, no, women are good enough to be deputies, you know, uh, women are not le good enough uh, uh, to lead, whether as, as the SG, probably, if, let's say they wanted to retain uh, President Ramaphosa as the women's league, but probably they could have probably had a discussion around maybe having a female candidate as the, as the SG, but also take you back a bit on the youth league also. Uh, you look at the composition of their top six, you know, 
uh, they only have two females. And I can tell you, if you go back in the history of the youth league, especially going going to the Stellenbosch conference of the ANC, the youth league at the time proposed to the ANC what was seen today, 50-50 across in terms of a uh, delegation to conferences, uh, in terms of the leadership comp composition. So they have also uh, went a step backward, the youth league and the women's league also has gone a step backward backward in terms of advancing the, the struggle of women. Mm, and, 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 you know, Reboni, when then one looks at, of course, what is then being said on the sidelines ahead of this conference, I know that you hadn't even seen this particular letter, but I'd like you, you to give me your thoughts on what former President Jacob Zuma released uh, today in, you know, as, as, of course, what are some of his reflections going towards December? He says, this time round, the sitting of the branch general meetings, regions and sub-regions has been fraught with technical problems which caused delays. The weaknesses at the SGO as well as the failure to pay staff salaries by the Treasurer General's office have clearly had a negative impact on, on the organization. Besides the administrative hiccups, we must come to terms with the fact that the ANC has changed into something else that we do not know. And then he continues to say in the letter that it appears as if there are individuals that are running the ANC who are outside of the ANC and not necessarily members of the ANC. Let's start with these weaknesses that he is now talking about, that he says appear to be in the SGOs and the Treasurer General's office. One would say that he's potentially taking a swipe at someone that others have backed to be Deputy President. No, absolutely. I mean, we know that the, the current TG is also the acting SG, um, who seems to be getting uh, overwhelming support. That means that uh, he's a problem. But also, let's remember the history between these two. You know, when Paul Machatele was the chair of Gauteng and when he was the president, uh, you remember that uh, Gauteng was always, you know, uh, not uh, supporting uh, uh, President Zuma, you know. I mean, we can go back to even 2012, you know, Gauteng was not supporting uh, President Zuma at the time. They were supporting uh, Khalima Mutante for, pre for president of, of of the ANC. So they have got a history themselves, which I think is known to the both of them. Uh, unfortunately, we, we are not privy what really happened, you know, for their relationship to break down. And then secondly, uh, I mean, the ANC this time around, you know, uh, they were using, you know, they've got a new uh, system, which is called the portal system, you know, even your membership uh, is online and everything. And they were using scanners, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and yes, mm -hmm. uh, at times you find that the uh, members of the ANC, uh, they don't get the proper QR code, the scanner is not working. That led to uh, challenges. And this, by the way, is a new system, you know, mm -hmm. whether we can say probably because of uh, delays due to salaries, maybe there was temp people were tempering with this. We don't know. Or probably, you know, when something is new, it will have hiccups before you get it right. So I think President Zuma, as the former president of the ANC, is this genuine in terms of speaking about the problems of the NC because a lot happened under his leadership as the president of the SG. Even the youth league was weakened under his leadership as the president uh, of the ANC. You know, I, I remember even uh, the letter written by former president uh, Mbeki, you know, to him, you know, saying that. Uh, uh, your secretary general at the time was Gwede Mantashe. When he deals with organizational matters, he, he, he's, he's not dealing with them at times because some of them are political challenges. So mm -hmm. the SGO has always been questioned. Even uh, former President Mbeki uh, did question also the SGO under his leadership. And interestingly enough, I wonder then, um, you know, as a final question, you, you remember after the passing of uh, the, the Deputy Secretary General, Jesse Duarte, a lot of people were talking about the critical role that she would have played um, as the organization goes closer now to, to, to the conference. Would you say that that gap is now visible? No, absolutely. I mean, the death of the late uh, DSG really had a huge impact uh, on the NC because either way, um, at least she was acting as G, you know, and the TG was still uh, full-time as the TG. Now imagine someone who's full-time as a TG uh, having to fundraise for this conference because uh, accommodation must be paid, the conference venue must be paid, and lo a lot of things have to have to be paid. Then have to run around again uh, uh, alone uh, with, uh, okay, Gwen Ramakhopa is there to help. You know, as we have seen that they've tried to pay up the SGO with also the likes of Gwen Ramakhopa. But it is not easy. It is not a normal uh, situation in the ANC currently.
I mean, for an example, you look at the powers that the electoral committee has got. I think they've got too much powers for people who are not serving in any structure to even say that there must not be any PGCs. They are depriving branches of the ANC the opportunity to, to, to deliberate on policy positions of the different provinces going to this conference. All right, Rabonia, thank you so much for your time. Do appreciate it. Um, you know, as I always say to you, it's not the end. We're still going to speak again because there's quite a lot of developments that are happening in the public domain around this one as we get closer to December. That's Rabonia Dao, uh, former ANC Youth League National Task Team member.